Do you ever feel like you're so caught up in misery that you can't tell north from south and you really need God's help, but you're, you're so exhausted you're struggling to even ask for help anymore? We're going to talk about that from Psalm chapter 6. Hey guys, and welcome back to God's Word Made Simple by Simple Servant Ministries. My name is Aaron Hawk, and if this is your first time joining us, I just want to say thank you and welcome. God's Word Made Simple is an online discipleship ministry dedicated to taking God's Word and making it simple. So we want to do three things. We want to help you understand God's Word, apply it to your life, and grow in your relationship with the Lord. So guys, if you like this content and this channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn the bell icon to all so that you don't miss any future videos. And we would really love to have you as part of our family. Okay, guys, so we're doing Psalm chapter 6 today, and this is another psalm from David. And we don't know the exact background to this passage, but clearly if, as we read through this, something has happened. David has gotten in trouble of some sort. It would appear to me that this is largely self-inflicted, so I can't help but wonder if this one is after the whole Bathsheba incident. And if you're not familiar with that, I don't want to take the time today to cover that. Just it was bad. Uh, in, in essence, for the Bathsheba incident, David committed adultery and then had her husband killed so he could marry her after he already had other wives. So it was bad. So I can't help but wonder if this is after that, but we don't know. I don't have anything to tell me what the specific context of this particular psalm is, um, but we're going to go ahead and jump here in verse 1. O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger, nor chasten me in your wrath. So clearly he is expecting that God is angry and he's asking for mercy, right? Remember, mercy is asking for a relief from punishment. It's that the, the Lord would remove punishment that you deserve. Grace is when you are blessed in ways that you don't deserve, okay? So, O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger, nor chasten me in your wrath. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am pining away. Heal me, O Lord, for my bones are dismayed. See, I go back to other Psalms where David is reminding God, you know, God, I am but dust. Please, I'm fragile. I'm helpless, right? Even though he's not saying those words, I think that is implicit here, is this concept of God, I'm frail and I can't take your wrath. He's acknowledging and recognizing that he can't stand up to that kind of scrutiny. So, O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger, nor chasten me in your wrath. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am pining away. Heal me. So he's been hurt. He's hurting, right? Heal me, O Lord, for my bones are dismayed, which means this goes to the absolute core of his being. Verse 3, and my soul is greatly dismayed. But you, O Lord, how long, right? And have you felt that way before when you've messed up and you're trying to get back in good habits with your spiritual disciplines and you kind of just feel like God's still angry at you, right? Or still you're still facing some sort of a punishment? That's what David's going through here. He's saying, look, even to the core of my being, my very bones are dismayed or my soul is dismayed, right? Um, But you, O Lord, how long? In other words, how long am I going to have to endure this? Verse 4, return, O Lord, rescue my soul. In other words, please, please let me back into fellowship with you. Save me. And by the way, this has a lot of parallels to Psalm 51 too. And that one was after Bathsheba for sure. Save me because of your loving kindness. Remember that loving kindness word. I say this every video. I've explained it more in the past in some of the first videos in the Psalm and Proverb videos. Um... But that loving kindness is a tender love and care based on a past relationship. So he's calling up his past relationship here. Um, So save me because of your loving kindness, not because he deserves it, but he's just asking for it because of mercy and hoping for grace. Verse five, for there is no mention of you in death and Sheol who will give you thanks. So, you know, hey, God, if if uh, if you allow me to die from this, I'm not going to be able to praise you anymore, right? He didn't understand heaven, so we now understand heaven. But if he's in hell, if he's being sent to hell, which that word sheol would have been one of the three words that they used for hell or death or the pit, right? 
Okay, so in Sheol, who will give you thanks? In other words, hey God, um, I, I should be worth more to you alive than dead. That's the Aaron paraphrase of what he's saying there. Okay, verse 6. I am weary with my sighing. Every night I make my bed swim. I dissolve my couch with my tears. My eye has wasted away with grief. It has become old because of all my adversaries. We have these two verses just strung together. This picture of David just laid out on his bed, just sobbing and weeping and sighing. And he's saying, look, I'm... I'm now let me not paraphrase. Let's reread this, right? I am weary with my sighing. Lord, I'm so distraught. I'm even tired from all of the crying. I'm weary from my sighing. Every night, not just once. This isn't just a once breakdown. This is a season that he has gone through, a period of time that he is going through. Every night I make my bed swim. In other words, the tears are so plentiful that his bed is soaking wet as if it is swimming. Every night I make my bed swim. I dissolve my couch with my tears. In other words, my tears are so plentiful that it is ruining my bed. My eye has wasted away with grief, right? And that's the idea that I have cried so much. I'm all red eyed, that stinging feeling, right? My eye has wasted away with grief. It has become old because of all my adversaries. There is so much stress and turmoil and crying and it's a result of whatever's going on with these adversaries, whether this was something self-inflicted, which I believe it is based on the wording that he chooses all in the psalm so far. It's likely, again, that this was after Bathsheba or something like that, where then the adversaries started rising up against him. I don't know that. I'm making a humongous jump there, and that is an opinion and a loosely founded one at that. And then verse 8. Depart from me, all you who do iniquity, for the Lord has heard the voice of my weeping. See, now he is taking victory. He, he knows, he believes, he has faith that God has indeed heard him. So now he is able to stand in the strength God has given him. Not his own strength, but the, stand, the strength that God has given him. He says, Depart from me, all you who do iniquity, the adversaries, right? For the Lord has heard the voice of my weeping. So now, as he usually does, if not always, he is ending this on a positive note, praising the Lord and demonstrating his trust in the Lord. He is thanking the Lord ahead of time for what he will do. So the Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord receives my prayer. All my enemies will be ashamed and greatly dismayed. They shall turn back and they will suddenly be ashamed. So there we have David absolutely pouring his heart out, literally to the point where his body is physically exhausted from all of the crying and sobbing from whatever is going on. So guys, when you are struggling, be like David. Pour your heart out to God. Be honest and transparent with God. I mean, he's telling God, look, I'm tired of crying. I'm physically exhausted. Be honest with the Lord. Share that with him and then say, but Lord, I know that you hear me or something like that, right? Bring it back to faith in God because based on that loving kindness, that past relationship, you know that God had your back in the past. So you know that he, you should know that he will have it in the future. So guys, that's my encouragement to you today. Whatever you're struggling with, I want you to rest in the Lord. Guys, if you appreciate this, hit that like button. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe and the bell icon. Any comments, questions, stories that you want to share, hit me up in the comments. I'd love to interact with and hear from you. Uh, guys, thank you very much and God bless.